Tim McCullum, Beyond Good Chocolate. Yeah, I mean, the, the biggest thing is probably our, our business model is a bit different. So we are um, producing chocolate from start to finish in Africa. Uh, zero middlemen between the factory and the farmers, so the farmers are making a lot more money than they normally would. We have 100% traceability. Um, and then there's a big environmental component to what we do. And um, from reforesting land to providing uh, habitat for endangered lemurs as well. Um, but really, it's, it's at the end of the day, delivering a better product for customers. Um, a type of chocolate that's different than most others in terms of how it tastes that um, brings everything together for us. Yeah, so we're going to go from supporting 100 farmers to 500 farmers over the next five years. Um, that's across Madagascar and East Africa. And similarly, we have about 500 hectares under sustainable management that's going to grow to about 2,000 hectares over the next five years. So pretty big impact across um, farmer populations as well as the environment. Yeah, that's happened over a very long period of time, but cocoa originated in Latin America, moved to West Africa, and West Africa has really developed the global crop. Um, and so they produce about 70% of the world's global crop now. Um, but that's all what's referred to as commodity cocoa. So while in volume, it's, it's the world's leading producer, um, in quality, it's not so great. And you do have pockets in Latin America and other parts of the world that aren't producing the volumes of West Africa, but the quality is actually much, much better. And there's a lot of sustainability that can come from a higher quality cocoa crop. We don't use any herbicides or pesticides, so it's all organic. Um, and what we've seen is um, a lot of biodiversity within the plantings. Um, 85 different species of plants and animals live and reside within the cocoa forest. And that's really kept you know, the, the crop relatively disease free. We don't, that, that doesn't touch us. We observe it and it's important to understand that larger context but we've built our own supply chain. It's 100% proprietary. Um, and we did it to actually distance ourselves from that traditional model where the cocoa originates in Africa and then it's manufactured somewhere in the Northern Hemisphere in, in Switzerland or Belgium. So we don't touch that. We don't have anything to do with that model. Um, and in many ways, what we're doing stands in stark contrast to all of that as a way to illustrate there are better ways to make chocolate than what the industry model would suggest. Most people don't think about chocolate in that, that context, but it's very important to us. Um, one of the reasons we started the business. And so if you really do think about it, cocoa originates in a country. And that crop is very unique to that country, depending on the soil and the climate and the people who farm it. Um, and so we have a very compressed supply chain. It's really just the farmers and the manufacturer. Um, and that enables us to bring out a better quality product, but also provide a lot more traceability and transparency along the way. Oh yeah, 10 generations from now, people will continue to eat chocolate. Um, dark chocolate is not bad for you. Um, and uh, so there's some health benefits to it. It's one of the first affordable luxuries as people in parts of Africa lift themselves out of poverty. And so Africa historically hasn't been a chocolate consuming nation, or I should say continent. That's 
starting to change slowly. Um, the uh, frequency with which people eat chocolate is probably going to increase even in, in developed markets. So long term, there's, you know, only expect more people to eat more chocolate.